Well, hello, my lovelies. Rob here from the office at Kickback Garage. Now, I've just thrown up some random uh, video footage of you to, to watch here while I ramble a little bit. Um, I'm, I've just put together some footage from uh, the engine strip I just did, and I haven't got an introduction or a uh, outro, an intro or outro. So uh, I'm going to do it this way with a voiceover while you're watching some beautiful scenery. Uh, but first off, let me just uh, roll the intro. So here I am riding around in the beautiful Norwegian countryside. Um, so what's happening is I've uh, just got the parts for this engine that you're going to see in a second. And I see that the bill has come up to with uh, Norwegian VAT, which is 25%. And uh, this engine has turned out pretty expensive. Um, all the parts without labor, I don't charge labor, uh, has come to uh, 25,000 krona, Norwegian krona. And that is around about with today's uh, money, probably 2,200 pounds. That is a lot of money for uh, a standard type uh, build. The problem is, um, oh, what, about, what I actually do now is uh, in the video, I'll run you through some of the reasons and the reasoning behind why this uh, engine build has uh, turned out so expensive. Uh, one of the main things is the chain case that was buggered, you'll see that is coming up. Um, I really do not like, if you tune a scooter, you've got big chance of uh, breaking your kickstart shaft or and your uh, side case. And the fellow that I'm building this for, he uh, has never uh, wrenched on a mechanic, on a, on a mechanic. <laughs> he's never wrenched on a Lambretta before and uh, he wants this thing to be absolutely bulletproof and uh, as you all know bulletproof and taking out a lot of guesswork costs a little bit of money right let's uh, throw you over to the video and uh, yeah have fun check out my tidy workbench <laughs> really annoying I, I tend to start jobs and then uh, I get a bit bored and then I go over to a new job and then I get a bit, bit bored and I end up with an array of tools and parts lying around all over the place. I actually got some on the floor as well. It's getting a bit busy in the garage. <laughs> um, and But the thing is, this, uh, this is uh, an engine of a guy called uh, Koston. In, uh, from Stavanger, which is about a four hour, four hour jaunt from my house. He uh, really wants this sorting out. This scooter is really cool. And when he comes over, we're gonna film when I put this engine uh, back into his scooter because it's a, it's a TV 175 as a rat. You don't see many of those these days because they, they're getting uh, quite valuable. But what he uh, he doesn't really know what he wanted to do. He he, he is a Vespa rider, <laughs> bless him, and he wants me to turn his TV 175 rat it basically into a PX 200. Now I know how to do that, and <laughs> the way we do that is by fitting a uh, RT 195. But this one I'm doing a little slightly different. I'm actually going to uh, run you through the parts that I'm going to fit in here and uh, my reasoning behind it. And this is what I consider to be a dream build uh, on a slight budget. It's not a budget. This is an expensive uh, engine. Um, I think it works out that the parts alone come to about £2,000, which is a lot of money. But on the back side of the coin there, this will run and ride like a PX200, slightly faster by the way, and uh, be really, really uh, reliable and uh, a nice, uh, pleasant uh, ride. He's got motorbikes, stuff like that. He just wants something to, uh, to put her over to uh, rallies and stuff like that. So this is sort of uh, my dream, dream build for those sort of things. So first off, 
uh, what I've done is, oh, damn it. Oh. <laughs> so this is the original side casing. Now, I hate this. You should never, ever do this. If you've got a tuned scooter, don't use the thinner type kickstart shaft, which you find on these uh, Series 1 and Series 2 casings. Now, you can uh, deter the difference between them because this one, if you have a look at your Series 3, you'll see there's like strengthening bridges on the kickstart shaft side here. And the actual kickstart itself is skinnier. And as you can see, this one as well has been grinding, a, grinding away on the, uh, on the clutch there. And uh, this part here, the tolerances are so small. This, this is really sloppy, by the way. You can actually pull the shaft and push the shaft. It's been shimmed terribly or got really sloppy over the years. So what I like to do with these, it's a, slight, it's a costly way to do it, but um, I like to fit the uh, GP or Series 3 type uh, size, side case. And uh, I've done the same that I did with uh, Dan Cotos' scooter. I have fit the, um, oh, what's it called? The, the Uni. I've been really pleased with that because the nice thing is you can keep, you can keep the ramp that you can see here for the kickstart shaft on the new one and uh, this is a lot better system than the ramp on the end case and then you can see the mag house that is in the naughty corner that was blowing uh, shit all over the place there it wasn't uh, it wasn't airtight all the threads on the uh, cylinder cowling absolutely uh, kaputski so I have bought a uh, uni my girls, I like those. They fit really well. Uh, the recent ones, by the way, if you go into my... I have a review of the Uni, uh, my girls, up there. I'll uh, throw a link to that. Um, the first ones that I had, they were really, really tight on the bearings. The new ones, they are not so. As long as you put the bearings in the freezer and you heat it up really well, then you can just drop them in without using any brute force whatsoever. So that'll sort out his uh, issues with uh, false air. The ignition kit, I am gonna use the Stata. It's some sort of generic Indian one. Um, it looks pretty good quality. The flywheel, on the other hand, doesn't look too good. I'm not sure what they've done there. Uh, I, I sort of suspect that, uh, that he's been having a uh, poor spark because the, the whole pro, whole issue here was that you couldn't get this thing to start the uh, cylinder you can see that can you see that i need to buy myself some glasses it's over there somewhere there it is the cylinder is a tv 175 original it's been bored out it's got an original male um piston and that is looking absolutely superb the reason for that is <laughs> he hasn't managed to get it to start so uh, I imagine it's electrical, but we'll try this starter first. It looks okay. The the welds, the solders look uh, look okay. So we'll uh, we'll give this a go. And I bought the BGM flywheel because uh, I have decided. To, obviously, another good thing to do when you're upgrading your engine is go for the GP two hundred crankshaft because the taper. It's fatter on that, and it's a lot stronger. The carb, PHBL uh, 25, we're gonna keep that. Just gonna jet it up. It's, it's really dirty, I'm not sure what's been going on there. Uh, so that we're gonna keep. Uh, problem with the clutch is all the uh, clutch plates, they were tossed, and this is the older type that's got the clutch, the cush, the cush drive. I think you can see those. These really, you can see the springs there. So you get two cush drives. The only really modern way you can do that is buying a Casa Performance clutch. Something I've not tried yet. Something I just can't afford. But it'd be cool to, uh, to try it. But anyway, these 
if you're tuning your scooter, it doesn't matter how many, or <laughs> whatever you're doing really with the scooter, you should just bin these. They just fit for the bin. I really don't like them. I've seen springs go all over the place. And you end up with a Vespa problem with the uh, knackered cush drives. So what I've decided to uh, buy there is we're being really posh and uh, we're going to fit an LTH clutch. Now that is completely overkill. So it's we're going for the BGM crankshaft, GP type. We are with standard stroke. So that, was, that means uh, we're going for a 58 stroke, 107 uh, rod length. And the nice thing about the uh, LTH clutches is, is this sort of lasts forever. If you put those in an original type engine or something under 20 horsepower, you're never really going to have to uh, change your uh, clutch plates. But the reason why I decided to go that way is if you're going to assemble uh, a clutch from parts, you're not really sure. I think it's really annoying if, uh, if the tolerances are wrong and you end up buying stuff twice. Uh, the nice thing about uh, the, the modern clutches like the LTH or the BGM Pro clutch is that uh, all the guesswork is taken out for you. Now, I was thinking about buying the BGM clutch because that is uh, 100 and something pounds less, but um, that, the, the problem is they only had the uh, 47 in stock and I need a 46 tooth, and the LTH, they had a 46, and if I'd gone for the BGM clutch, I would also need to it's got quite a nice tensioner in here. It's the uh, MB one. Uh, and his chain is a nice shiny Iwis chain. So that's uh, been upgraded at some point. So what I, uh, the reason why I decided to go for the LTH is because I could get it with the correct number of teeth, which meant that it didn't have to swap out his chain and uh, sprockets. Uh, and that saved him 100 quid. So it's, it sort of goes up, up and up, up and up. So it would be the same price anyway. Um, I bought some new shims for the, um, for the gearbox. That's a bit dodgy. It's really, really loose. And the splines on the lay shaft, completely shot. So I needed a new uh, lay shaft. And let me show you the rear hub. So this is the, <laughs> the rear hub. I imagine this is the original one. Um, it's really hard to see, but the splines, can you see those? I'm not sure if you can see them. I'll try and zoom in. They're absolutely shot. The, the destroying thing about this is when I took off the rear hub, I could just pull it off like a Vespa. I did not use, need to use a pulling tool. Luckily, luckily, because as you can see, at some point, someone has sheared the other two uh, threaded holes, they've been sheared off because I know for a fact, I know the previous owner of this scooter and he has lost his rear wheel a couple of times. And that is something that is so scary. I actually stopped scootering for a couple of years because I did that. It just really, really spooked me. So this rear hub is tossed. So that is why uh, it's going to cost a little bit of money, this, uh, this engine to get sorted. And as you can see, this is, this is really strange. The, the braking surface on the rear hub as well is absolutely shagged. Deep, 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 really deep grooves. I don't know if, can you hear this? Let's uh, put it near a microphone. Really, really, really deep grooves. And the reason for that is that the uh, rear brake pads were completely non-existent they were the original asbestos type and the actual pad surface itself was gone <laughs> so it was just metal on metal so that is completely tossed so what i've done i have bought a uni i normally uh, go for fa italia so i'm going to try an uni this time to see how that is uh, uh rear hub i bought new pads and i've bought a new lay shaft and i really like the uh BGM lay shafts, that's what I used on the TV, uh, and uh, that should give him some safe motoring in the future. But I'll, uh, I'll talk you through more about that build 
as I build it. And if there's anything you wonder about, please give me a shout and I'll, uh, I'll talk about that. Uh, just a quick thing I forgot to mention, uh, the exhaust pipe is the uh, BGM, I think, uh, version 4. It's a new one, exhaust pipe, so that's good, so we don't have to change that. And the, another reason why I have to change the side casing is because, um, oh, let me show you. The engine was completely filthy on, on the outside. I've actually given it a bit of a clean. It still looks really dirty, but I've given it a clean. But as you can see, something uh, dodgy has happened with the, with the screw holes here. I think, I think uh, the previous owner might have drilled these out or something. And it looks like they've been, look at the surface, the gasket surface on the edge here. It, that, that is not, and it didn't uh, hold oil in the crankcase. And we don't like leaky crankcases because this is a Lambretta, not a BSA or <laughs> a Vespa either. So there you have it, my lovelies. I am not going to run down into the garage and uh, just film an outro. I'm going to do it in the comfort of my office. <laughs> and uh, while I'm editing the video, I really want to get this out before uh, New Year's. And uh, the reason for that is because I want to uh, say Happy New Year to all my followers. Thanks for all the... Uh, attention both wanted and unwanted throughout this year uh, we're almost at 5,000 subscribers I think that's pretty good I mean Lambretta's is such a tiny niche market even though we think we're the center of the universe <laughs> we're not really um, yeah I think uh, I think uh, this engine is going to be a good one and the year was a good one and I hope uh, I'll see you all after the new years and uh, not long until the season starts. I mean, the sun has uh, now turned around, as we say in Norway, the days are getting lighter, and suddenly the scooter season will be upon us again. And uh, I love you and leave you, and see you all next year. <laughs> ta -ra. Kanskje jeg ikke skjønner hvorfor du gjorde som du gjorde At du ikke tok tappen for deg enda under bordet Og håpet på et mirakel Vet at mange ser mot stjernen Du lå bare og stirret i taket Tok deg vann over hodet Det går an Ikke lett å puste med hodet sitt under vann Han som alltid så halvfulle glass Penger på bakken og det er en helt annen plass Bare et helt annet lass enn vi andre måtte bære Er det bare da for at du fortsatte verden For da verden ble kald, fløys du Og da løpet ble lang, brøy du Du, du, vet jeg Historien om suksess, hva er det du tror? Hvor skjer? Når kongen dømmer og versvømmer Så du, du ser Historien blir repetert Du var majestet Men, men Ingen kan vel herske evig Hvor er det nå?